The Crusader, which is the tank we've got here, is probably the definitive British tank for at least associated with the Western Desert. They were chronically unreliable, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But this one is an unusual version of the Crusader. It's the Mark III. Now, the Mark III had a new turret, which was actually designed by Morris Motors themselves, and it mounted the six-pounder gun. But because it had the six-pounder gun in, it only had a two-man crew in the turret, which meant that the commander had to be the loader, which wasn't really ideal. And that's how they overcame the space problem, because it's quite a large gun. And a lot of it has to be carried in the turret because they like to balance the gun for firing on the move. So that it was the gun was shoulder operated by the gunner. He had a sort of uh, horseshoe shaped thing that fitted into his shoulder and he used that to elevate and depress the gun. Rotation is by um, mechanical means, that's easy taken care of, but the rest of it for firing on the move was the gun in free elevation which was hard work, I can tell you. Now, the other thing that singles out the Mark III from the earlier versions is that it doesn't have the sub-turret to the left of the driver's cab at the front. All the earlier tanks, or not all of them, but the majority at least, had a sub-turret with a Beza machine gun in it. But this proved so hot and uncomfortable in the desert that they wouldn't occupy it anyway, and they were quite happy to take it off. But on the Mark III, they needed the space for ammunition stowage, so they altered it completely. But otherwise, it's a basic Crusader. It's powered by the V-12 Liberty engine, the American V-12, First World War vintage, really, which is in the back. It's a water-cooled engine, and it drives through a, a fairly simple transmission, clutch and brake steering, and... The Crusader uses Christie suspension, which is why the road wheels are quite low down. There's quite a big gap between the top run of the track and the tim work because the wheels have a lot of free motion. And they say that the Crusader's turn of speed, when it could manage it in the desert, was very good indeed. And because of that, the tank was um, rather envied by the Germans. But it had the two-pounder gun, which the original Crusaders had had no hitting power at all as far as modern German tanks were concerned and it meant that our people had to go suicidally close to the German tanks in order to knock them out at all. Now as to reliability, the um, V12 engine in the back was fairly good. It wasn't as powerful as some V12s that came later, but it was good enough for the Crusader. The trouble was, or two troubles really, the first was that the fan drive, which was associated with the water cooling, was chain driven, and the chains tended to wear out the sprockets that were, they were geared to, or the sprockets wore out the chains, it didn't matter which, but it meant that the cooling broke down quite often. If that wasn't bad enough, the other problem was the air filters. They got everything in the back, radiators, fuel tanks, the lot, all stuck behind the turret. They didn't have room for the air cleaners. So they, you'll find that the air filters are situated on the track guards near the back of the tank on each side. And they tended, because of that, being outside the tank, to clog up very quickly with sand and other muck that was floating about in the desert. It made the tank another problem, really, and all those problems were associated with the airflow and cooling. And they all had to be corrected one way or another. And it was really things like that. Nothing very significant, but all cumulative, if you like. Otherwise, the tank was very, you can see it's got very sleek lines. It was fast, quite automated as far as it went, and quite a popular tank with its crews when it was in working order. Um, of welded construction, built by Nuffields at their factory in um, Oxford and built in other places as well, but Nuffield was the main contractor for it. And it was a well-built tank in its way. Like most Christie-based vehicles in Britain, it had a double thickness hull here, an inner and an outer layer with the springs sandwiched in between. So it made it that much thicker as well, but fairly low and with hardly really a, a vertical plate on it except the front plate. It's, uh, it's very well designed in many respects.